circuit experiences are among the best ways of earning cash in GT7, but getting gold on all of them can be a challenge. Now, as I've said on the channel before, and as I'll doubtless say again, although I'm adept enough to gold most things in the game, I'm certainly not one of the fastest drivers in the world. And if even I can do it, then many of you certainly can as well. In fact, much of getting golds in games, not just Gran Turismo, but any, is actually more about the strategy you choose rather than how fast you are purely on a surface level. Because I've got four tips in this video of how to give yourself a better fighting chance of getting those golds and in so doing, earning literally dozens of millions of credits. The Nürburgring Nordschleife alone, for example, will net you well over six million credits for getting gold on all sectors. That's quite a big payout. And although I'm going to cover my personal four recommendations in the video, recommendation number one is actually the main reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place. If you take nothing else away from this tutorial, please listen to number one the most, because it is the key. Now, I tried this one myself as a little bit of an experiment, and it worked so well that it inspired the entire video. And that is, do last first. What I mean by that is simple. When you jump into a circuit experience, go to the final sector and do that before everything else. The final sector, of course, is the full lap attack. Now, that may seem counterintuitive. Surely, if the game is working up to that level, that must be the hardest one. Well, actually, no, it's not. The game is tricking you. Because the main problem with doing the first other sectors is you cannot get a flow going. It's such a short amount of distance that most tracks are covering in each sector that by the time you've got a flow going, you've either finished or cancelled or failed. So the full lap gives you a chance to really get a feel for the car and for the circuit and crucially for the flow of the corners. Now, once you've done that, if you even for yourself experiment between doing these two methods, either working up through one, two, three, four, five, or however many sectors the normal way, then try it this way. Do the full lap first, do it as best as you can, then go back to the sectors and do those. I guarantee you will find them easier because your brain will remember the flow of the full lap and apply it to each of the sectors. That is the most important thing I'm going to say in this video. It sounds simple, and I'm sure many of you already do this, or a variation of it. It makes a colossal difference, trust me. And I've even shown some footage of when I used this myself within GT7 on circuit experiences that I hadn't yet done. Now, number two is going to be a more controversial one, but it's one which, especially for drivers who are newer to the franchise, who are less confident with the physics or just in general like to try having little workarounds, not quite cheats, but ways of making life a little bit easier for yourself, you'll probably already know that in the bottom right of the screen, you can switch through a number of options. You've got sectors, you've got brake balance, and you've got traction control. Now, as long as you've got your menu set up and your buttons mapped, you can turn the traction control setting of the car up or down, of course, while driving. The majority of the time, though, the only settings on that that actually matter are zero, and one, because that difference makes a colossal difference, especially to a race car. My recommendation number two here is to consider that as an active traction control system. So me, for example, when I do these events, sometimes at least, let's say, for example, I'm driving a high power, low weight race car on a really tight technical circuit where you can easily spin up the wheels, especially if you're pushing the car super hard on sectors in particular, where you cannot get that aforementioned flow going, then look at that traction control system as a little bit of a cheat. Think of it as like the anti-lag system for tyres, where it just gives you that extra half a second or so where the car can catch its breath, get some grip, and then once you've exited a corner, turn the traction back off again to unleash more of that acceleration. Now, ultimately, the caveat to this is driving without traction control is ultimately faster but you have to learn to be faster. Turning it on and off, especially for less experienced players, will give you the edge you need to beat your own ghost and get better and better. Then once you reach the point of confidence with that car, turn the traction off, and you may well find yourself being even quicker again. It's more of a learning curve system, which gives you a bit of a safety net. 
Tip number three is also something which I've been a huge fan of, and this was a point which was crystallised in my mind back when I actually did one of the license tests in this game. The Porsche 917 at Spa in the Super Class license. You're driving a wet event on a technical circuit in an old school prototype race car. That sounds like quite the challenge, and it is. Except, I golded it first time. And the reason why I golded it first time was because I took a cruise don't attack approach. What I mean by that is also very simple. When you enter an event, in this case a circuit experience, especially the sectors rather than a full lap, you can have this almost subconscious mentality where you're approaching it as if it's a hill climb, like you're trying to throw the car through every corner to just get going as fast as possible. Throwing it around, slamming on the brakes at the last minute, slamming on the throttle, and even when combined with stuff like the previous tip, you can end up kind of tripping over your own feet. So what I mean by crews don't attack is at least for your first couple of attempts, again, especially if you're not the quickest of drivers, approach each sector or even each full lap on the final section as if you're doing a really fast showboating lap, like a really fast cruising lap. So smooth throttle, smooth brake, smooth steering, try to flow the car through the corners rather than ducking and diving. Nine times out of ten, you'll find that you'll actually end up being quicker on average, even though through one or two corners, an attacking approach will be quicker. Now again, for pro drivers, this is irrelevant, because you're already more experienced. But you could say that about all of the points in this video. This is for people who aren't at that level. Then, point number four is one which I think is more abstract, and you could say this kind of applies to many things in life, and that is innovate don't imitate. And I would certainly wish that certain channels followed this approach, because one of the things I've always prided myself on is trying to do things that I want to do, and that I've come up with, rather than copying someone else. I just wish other channels had the same idea, because it's a lot easier to just copy someone else rather than actually being creative yourself. Now, when it comes to this piece of advice within the game, it's actually not as obvious. See, I've thought for a while now, and I believe many of you will probably agree with this, that when it comes to racing against your own ghost, you are quite literally your own worst enemy. And the problem goes much deeper than just racing against yourself. The problem is you're giving yourself negative reinforcement. Because on the surface of things, you're thinking, well, if that's my ghost, then I need to beat that ghost. And if I beat the ghost, then I'm going to win the gold. Unfortunately, nine times out of ten, that's actually not how it works. See, if you failed the first time, then by copying that ghost and trying to beat it, you're actually just reinforcing what you did wrong. You're doing it more wrong. So what you should actually do is, as I said, innovate your lap. Don't do the same thing that you did last time and try and do it better, because you can end up trying to do things like outbreaking your ghost by breaking a little bit later, turning sharper and ending up ruining the racing line, slamming on the throttle earlier than you did last time, and spinning out. Now, all of these things are easier said than done when it comes to actual self-control, but it matters because whatever you did in that ghost is your penultimate failure. You should look at that ghost as being everything you shouldn't be doing this time around. So take a different approach. Don't necessarily go super radical, like entering a corner from the complete opposite side of the track or something, but sometimes that innovation can mean the difference between a bronze and a gold, especially on a longer circuit. So as much as it goes against your natural inclination, and even the inclination that the game is trying to give you by providing the ghost in the first place, don't imitate yourself. Innovate. Do what you did on that first lap. I know for many of you, a similar thing probably happens to me, where you'll often feel like the best driving you do is on your first lap, and then as soon as that ghost comes up, if you didn't get the gold, you start getting frustrated. Why can't you beat yourself again? This is part of the reason why. So don't copy yourself. Try to do something different. A single corner here, a couple of moments of later or earlier braking or throttle control over here or over there can make the difference between winning and losing. So these are my four ultimate points on how to, at the very least, improve all of your times on circuit experiences, and for many of you, the difference between getting a silver or a bronze and the ultimate gold.
So if you do find this useful, I hope of course you win plenty of cash in the game, and of course stick around on the channel for more tips, tricks, of course tuning, money earning methods, and a ton of other content in GT7. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.